Hello, welcome to The Daily Politics. The government is accelerating its plans to double the amount of free child... All that coming up in the next hour. First of all today, the government has announced that it is to double free childcare for working parents in England a year earlier than planned. Pilots for the scheme, offering 30 hours of care for three- and four-year-olds, will now begin in September next year. This is what the Prime Minister had to say a little earlier. Well, not everyone's happy. A charity that represents many daycare providers, the Preschool Learning Alliance, has warned that the free childcare scheme is already severely underfunded. Although, do you support the idea of doubling the amount of free childcare for three to four-year-olds? That be, then, if you're saying one in five places is not funded? Well, we should pay for that. Oh, it will push costs up. I mean, I'm going to ask the Minister, and I'll put these points to him, sure. but do you think the the cost will be pushed up for parents who aren't eligible for this scheme or those parents of children under three. Will they have to pay more to subsidise by the child care and education ministry? Bring in when and who for? At the moment, it's clear there is a funding shortfall. Sounds like you're not going to give enough money to meet the cost. Shannon Hawthorne, there's already a shortfall. One in five places is not funded. Why? We've the, she's saying they're not the funded bill. already. It's not about jumping the gun. She, they're obviously making a pretty get bigger. You would agree with that. So, you're disagreeing with her figures. You're saying that she is wrong and the research that they have done is wrong in terms of how much it costs to provide for this. Say again, it's anybody uh, in terms of two working parents or a single parent who's working. Somebody on a family income of £300,000 will be eligible for state subsidised care. Higher earners be getting that free childcare. In fact, if there is a funding shortfall, higher earners be getting free childcare, or certainly as much as 30 hours. Well, be for childcare costs, which are considered one of the highest in the EU, would you be happy for them to increase more to one-year-olds? Would you be happy for those costs to go higher in order to help? Yeah. Though, haven't you? So you're trials. not giving them that so, much so time. Yes, pilots. Have a look at the idea of relaxing child to staff ratios. It was something that was considered um, under the coalition. We had uh, the minister at the time, Liz Trust, talk about it, but it was rejected. Moved off the idea of relaxing staff to child ratios. Costs down. Well, our, our... I mean, when you look at whether it'll encourage mums to go back to work, I mean, there is a lot of evidence to show that women make that decision quite often in the first year or so. So perhaps between when their child is nine months and three. So they'll have made that decision before all this free childcare kicks in. I take the point that you've got 15 hours for two-year-olds, but the, the, the bulk of it at three to four-year-olds will come much later. Do you accept that? So the Lib Dem proposal was better to look at that sort of childcare for two, three and four-year-olds. Um, Sam Gima, the, the reports, as you know, that Ian Duncan Smith, the Work and Pension Secretary, is doing some modelling um, on where welfare cuts, further welfare cuts. Would that have your support? Our manifesto pledge. Right. Now, David Cameron is back from his two-day whistle-stop tour of Europe. It all turned into a bit of a gastronomic odyssey. Culinary delights such as lobster terrine, smoked trout and veal escalope amongst the dishes that were laid before the Prime Minister in the four capitals he visited. I'm feeling hungry already. But did he achieve anything in his renegotiations of Britain's membership of the EU? Well, this morning, the chairman of the German Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs was in London. I caught up with Dr Norbert Röttgen at the German Embassy and asked him what he made of David Cameron's grand European tour. So you're not yet clear precisely what David Cameron is asking for. The debate in Britain is not a priority for you at the moment. You have said you very much want Britain to stay within the EU, so it sounds like you'll go quite a long way to meet David Cameron's. Well, let's look at some of the demands that we do know about. EU migrants to live here. EU migrants won't be considered for a council house until they've lived in an area for at least four years. Are those achievable? The proposals. As it stands at the moment, are those things achievable without treaty change? Because treaty change, in your mind, is not going to be possible, is it, within two years? Would it be better, in your mind, if the UK held this referendum before? And with me now is the former Conservative MP, Laura Sands, to both of you. I mean, Morning. first of all, Kelvin Hopkins, it doesn't sound like David Cameron's asking for anything that can't be negotiated and agreed within the member states without treaty change. Well, indeed. But what is it you want to see changed on freedom of movement? Because we've just heard there, and we've heard from numerous people uh, from other uh, EU capitals, that there cannot be any fundamental change to freedom of movement. That the problem, Laura Sands, Kelvin Hopkins, saying there isn't going to be substantial change, is there? Negotiation and reform that, that the Germans can sign up to, they're happy for, but that's not going to satisfy many people and many Conservative politicians about free movement. When UKIP got four million votes, they wanted to control your borders, which you can't unless 
you have complete treaty change? How can it be that it's not about uh, free movement when people want the numbers to come down? That's why the Conservatives had a target that they missed absolutely stratospherically and they're going to try and hit it again. But they can't, you can't do anything about the numbers of people coming in and out. But the point about freedom of movement, and you're saying they're not, I, and I'm I putting to you just looking at the, uh, the, the results of the election, they are. I agree with that. Well, no, I don't. So, so there were 700,000 job vacancies in the lead up to the election, not all unskilled and mixed jobs. That wouldn't then say that there are, there are jobs in the benefit system, because you talk about a level playing field, Laura Sands, a contributory based system, but we don't have that system. So this idea of discrimination, will you be able to restrict uh, EU migrant workers' access to benefits here without doing the same to British workers? Not if they're discriminated against. I mean, that's I what's very that. clear from the Germans is they're saying you can do that, but you'd have to do the same to you. Kevin Hopkins, if there isn't substantial change, if there isn't treaty change, which there isn't going to be, I don't think, in the next few years, and there isn't a change on freedom of movement, will you vote to leave? In come what may. I, I can't see why. But if he doesn't come back with well, any kind no, no, of no, substantial... I mean, I, I, reform is happening all the time, and reform is going to happen as a result of David Cameron's activities. Happen at kerfuffle if he tries to force ministers to campaign for a yes vote, if there is collective responsibility. You're a sceptic wing of the party. Well, I, I, not that many. <laughs> now, what's in store for us this week? Well, later today, Joe Watts from the London Evening Standard. It's all going to be different, isn't it? The SNP is the third largest party. Uh, Labour obviously talking about leadership contest. Harriet Harman versus David Cameron. What do you think it's going to feel like in the last 18 months or so that she wasn't exactly aligned uh, with Ed Miliband? But the other two are sort of saying, well, do you know what? He was wrong. Do you know? Well, I think if the Pierce mentioned the European Convention on Human Rights, let's go back to that. How serious do you think this split is? I mean, George Osborne has said there isn't a split, but he would say that, wouldn't he, Joe? Yes, absolutely. Do you think, Andrew Pearce, that they, I thought the idea was they weren't going to lead the European Convention on Human Rights, and that's what people are annoyed about. Well, let's, let's pick up on that reported split in Cabinet over whether or not to withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights. Pierce